Hey, good morning. This is the Ranch Ferry, and I have uh, made a new friend, and that information, who that friend is, will come up later. I'm just going to discuss a dangerous game build. So this individual is planning to hunt Cape Buffalo. It is currently May 1st, 2021, and we don't know if the airplanes are going to go there because this stupid COVID thing. But I just want to walk you through my thoughts and how I arrived at what we're going to set up and try to set up and what the plan is for a big animal arrow. She's planned to shoot a Cape Buffalo. She shoots 60 pounds and 27 and a half inches, so we got plenty of juice. And we might get to test on a bull nail guy or some pigs before that. But let me tell you how I walk through a dangerous game setup. And if y'all want a dangerous game setup, email me at troy at ranchway.com and we can walk through the same process and talk about it. And um, here we go. thing a person does when he has never shot a Cape Buffalo is call people or talk to people who have shot great big animals. I have this friend. His name is Dr. Ed Ashby. <laughs> if you haven't heard of this guy, you've been living under a rock. So if you've never heard of the tall study, go to the Ashby Bowhunting Foundation website, ashbybowhunting.org, and read the study. Dr. Ed spent a couple of decades, not a couple of days, decades studying the most effective penetrator in all situations. And it tested a ton on humongous animals. And he shot two rhinos as a kicker. And lots of Asiatic buff and all that stuff. And he was also a PH. So it's really hard to not take the man's word and say, here's how this should roll. So we are building an arrow that will have 11 of Dr. Ed's 12 factors. We're gonna be over 700 grains, forward to center in the mid 20s. We're trying to get over 25% and I'm trying to push it higher. And single bevel, everything. The only factor we're not gonna have is we're gonna have a parallel shaft. It's not going to be a tapered arrow. That's fine, that's what's flying off this individual's bow. But I wanna talk about the pointy end of the stick and the structural integrity piece and why we're doing what we're doing. So stay tuned for the pieces and parts. So when, when I undertook this project, um, I also called two other individuals who shot multiple K Buffalo. And uh, it's about a 50% pass through rate with those individuals. So consulting, right? The first thing we're gonna do is try to eliminate any point of the arrow failures on hard impacts on a big animal. So I got a hold of Wojo at Tough Ed and got some of the Tough Adapters. This is an old school glue on super adult insert. It goes into the arrow and then we're going to glue, it's 100 grains, we're going to glue the broadhead right on to that adapter. You can see we've eliminated the screw in piece. One less thing to worry about one less thing that could fail. And God help us if the broadhead somehow unscrewed a little bit and was wobbly on impact with a Cape Buffalo. This is gonna fix that. So we're gonna hot melt the broadhead onto that gizmo. Step two, I asked for some impact collars. So Wojo sent me these impact collars and they're gonna go behind the insert, okay, on the shaft. This is a pretty common thing these days. There's a lot of people having sleeve systems, but I have concerns, and I talked to Wojo about this, that the sleeve being longer than the insert inside the shaft may cause a break point back here. Let me show you that in the arrow. So inside the arrow, it's gonna be, the insert's that long. Let me see if I can hold this thing. Yeah but the, the impact collar is longer than the insert, okay? And try to hold it this way. So we go there and then 
it's going to be way out here. So this there's going to be a point right here at the back of the arrow, and this can't be resolved. Well, I've resolved it that this would be a rigid edge, and should the should the shaft flex on impact with a shoulder bone or a humerus or something, it could snap off because this is just air inside the arrow. <clears throat> now be clear. Collars, okay are only for impact in this direction. It's not a lateral stability thing. We are, if you're thinking about that, that is the wrong way to consider this. This is to reduce the possibility of the shaft, which is unprotected on a hard, hard impact on a big animal, of the shaft mushrooming a little bit and giving in this direction as the arrow travels forward. If the shaft gives, the penetration is gonna be reduced. That should be pretty straightforward. So I started peeling around. And I was thinking, hmm, if we shorten the collar, it'll be shorter than the back of the insert. So yeah, I'm going blind. These are what's known as glasses. I'm 51, 52, I think, and I'm going blind. So you'll see more of this. <laughs> Four eyes and this deal. My kids think this is hilarious, but I can't see. So one of the things that's interesting, I was talking to a mechanical engineer. Like I said, get to smart people and ask questions. Here is, I have every insert on the planet. Across the back. Ah, there you go. All right. They're all square across the back, which means if the shaft, as the arrow's coming in, when, they, when it hits something, the energy has to go somewhere. And if the shaft starts paradoxing back here, it's going to hit a rigid edge and could crack and cause it. The energy is going to be deployed. If it starts cracking, the energy is going out the hole. I mean, it's just the way it works. We do not want that to happen. Wojo, interestingly, I'm going to get a close up picture of this. This is a little bit tapered. And I called Wojo about this. This structure, this uh, mechanical engineer said, man, the, the taper on the back of there is really smart because then if the shaft flexes, it'll go around the corner. So, <clears throat> whoops. The impact collar is perfectly square. It's gonna wanna snap off. It's gonna lever it. But inside the arrow, this gizmo is tapered a little bit. He tapered it to make it easier to slide it in it. But this mechanical engineer I was talking to said, hey man, that's really smart because then the arrow flexes around the corner and it won't snap off and it'll keep going. So that is just one more thing. That's why I'm gonna shorten up the collar, okay? So that the collar's gonna be about, hang on, collar's gonna be about this long, okay? And this, this is solid inside the shaft, it's all together. And then the, if the shaft flexes, it'll kind of go around that little corner there and not break so we can hopefully retain some energy. Now there comes a point where this becomes really, you know, watchmaking and gets crazy because you're spitballing that stuff. We don't want that to happen. And if everything works out, it's not, none of this matters, but we're not planning for that. We're planning for plan B things to happen and that the arrow pointy end of the stick can't fail. One thing I didn't mention is we're working on arrow flight. So we're gonna have perfect arrow flight. All right, you sent, sent her some, some shafts to test and that's fine. So we're gonna we're working on them in the background. But while we worry about and get the arrows flying right and get the bow tuned to the arrows, that's I consider that to be the easy part. We still have to have an arrow system that's not gonna collapse. And then I'm gonna make this collar nice and short. Again, we're not worried about flex this way. I'm worried about making sure that on impact, it does not drive this insert back into the shaft if it hits something really hard. This will be epoxied onto the shaft. So I'll epoxy this in. Then I'm gonna put epoxy around here and I'm gonna epoxy the sleeve up against that insert just to reduce the possibility of it going backwards. Step three, broad head. So we wanted to go adult and in the study, Dr. Ed did for more than two decades, long three to one, single bevels were the winner. This is a 300 grain tough head. They're 0.081 thick, so they're not exactly a weenie. 
nice wide bevel, okay? Super thick. And that's gonna glue onto our bonded system. Now you see that right there? You see how that broad head's wider than the shaft? That is ideal. So we're shooting a mid diameter Sirius Apollo 204. And once the broad head clears, the shaft is much smaller than the wound and much smaller than the ferrule. And only this piece has drag. We don't want a big fat arrow back here. So we want the shaft diameter to be smaller than the ferrule of the broad head, which is one of the factors, there's 12 of them. And then this is a very low resistance broadhead. It has a very favorable angle of attack because it's so long and tapered. Once again, we're shooting a great big animal. Here's the deal. <clears throat> I say this a lot on my channel. We're not trying to make a Cape Buffalo bleed. We're not trying to uh, get a blood trail. We're trying to kill a Cape Buffalo. We want to be able to shoot right into the vital V. We want to be able to, I expect a pass through. That's what we're, our goal is a pass through. Minimally, we want to bury to the fletch. So I talked to Dr. Ed about this and I said, hey, spitball me a shot in the vital V through the shoulder meat. How wide is that on the Cape Buffalo? And he said somewhere between 24 and 26 inches on a big one, right? And we want to shoot a bull. Well, we're gonna have a 27 or 28 inch arrow. So if we go to the fletch, we're gonna be right at having an exit wound. But get this clear, when you are hunting dangerous game, you wanna be able to, well, you're hunting anything, you wanna be able to shoot through the most vital part of the animal in the vital V. And K Buffalo is no joking around, especially spot and stalk. I mean, <laughs> There's a tremendous possibility that your Cape Buffalo may decide to wheel around and turn you into the stuff between its toes at very close range. You do not want that to occur. So we want a very low impact resistance. We don't want it, we really don't want him to feel it much. We don't want him wheeling around. We don't want a big pop. We want something that just goes right through. We want it to be able to handle whatever it hits and we cannot have the front part of this arrow fail at all. It can't go backwards, the tip can't bend, the blade can't fail to stay sharp, and I promise you 0 .080 thick, and I'll strop these things till they'll be hair popping sharp. Impact collar to keep the shaft from mushrooming at all. This is where the rubber meets the road as far as structural integrity. It cannot give at all especially on the big stuff. They can't give it all on a white-tailed deer or a rabbit or a turkey, but it cannot give in this particular situation when you get to the big stuff. So that's the idea and the concept about the pointy end of the stick. There's just a lot of discussion these days around bows and back bars and having thumb release. What color is your thumb release? Can I get it anodized to match my fancy beanie? And it's just really, I know I'm being sarcastic and kicking people in the butt on that, but you just don't talk about the pointy end of the stick enough. We just don't talk about the fact that broadheads kill animals. Broadheads that push the shaft back or redirect on impact or go sideways or can't penetrate bone are less efficient at killing animals. And when you get to the big stuff, all we're trying to do is get the sharp broadhead through it and out the other side. Let it run off. They weigh a ton. We'll track it. Their feet are <laughs> big and uh, it's gonna be okay. So we are trying to get maximum penetration through both lungs, sever the major arteries off of the heart and let it, let it play out. We're not trying to track. We're trying to kill a Cape Buffalo. So that's that, I appreciate it. If you have any questions about this or you're going dangerous game hunting, Troy at ranchfree.com, hit me on email and we can chat about it and I can give you some guidance on that. Like I said, I've never shot a Cape Buffalo, but I have friends who have and a ton of people who shot completely through them and I can call more people, but Dr. Ed's pretty, <laughs> he's pretty solid to talk to. 
and um, it's always better to have smart friends than to be smart and talk to people who've done it rather than just spitballing and watching some YouTube videos and hoping to God you get this right. Y'all have a great day and thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and that bell thing. Get some notifications. There'll be some more videos like this. Branch Ferry out.